theme for this year's CF Countdown Art is Nusantara Aisekai, which refers to the Southeast Asia's Malay Archive Palago. Looking at the instantly detailed official concept arts, one initial idea that I have in my mind was an epic shot of a Nusantara style castle. But I decided not to proceed with this idea as it would have taken me more time to develop. So I decided to proceed with a simpler idea, something closer to the slice of life genre. I started with a sketch of this simple bus stop scene. The roof of the bus stop is designed to follow the traditional Nusantara style architecture, more specifically the Minangkabau style. Once I was happy with the sketch, I proceeded to model the bus stop using Blender 3D. Since the bus stop is symmetrical in design, I use a mirror filter with the X and Y option enabled to make the modeling process go faster. I also added the beaver filter to remove the sharp edges from the 3D model. To further speed up the modeling process, I reused 3D models that I made from another project. For rendering, I used EV Render Engine because of the real-time preview option. I also changed the view transform under the color manipulation tab from Filmic to Standard. This is because Standard will render with original colors, which are more vibrant, while Filmic will render with a more desaturate look more suitable for a realistic rendering. For a lighting setup, the scene is added with two sunlights. A main sunlight which casts shadows, and a second sunlight to brighten up the shadow color. Then, a world shadow which further improves on the dark shaded area. I have two tutorial videos which I explain in detail about my render setup. If you are interested in this topic, you can find the links in my video description. As for the material setup, a simple principle BSDF shader with texture image is used for most of the 3D objects. The 3D models are also UV unwrapped, so I could easily paint the textures in Photoshop. The painted texture will help to improve the overall painterly look. Hair particle system emitted on the 3D plane is used for the grass patch beside the bus stop. The trick here is to use a painted grass texture for the particle system. So the hair particles will render based on the grass texture's color. Also remember to change the shape to strip in the curve settings under the render properties tab. This will let us adjust the width of the hair particles so they will look more like actual grass strands. Adjust the clumping settings to make the grass look more natural. I also made some custom grass and leaves models and placed them around the scene. This will help add some variation to the grass feel. There is a good anime grass tutorial by Christoph. I will share the link in my video description. As for the bushes in the scene, I started with an icosphere and added a displacement filter with procedural clouds textured on it, then changed the coordinate option to global. This will randomize the shape of the icosphere when we move them around the scene. Now add a particle system on the icosphere and adjust the option so it admits custom leaf objects. The custom leaf object that I'm using is just a simple model with alpha PNG texture. There is a good anime bush tutorial by Lightning Boy Studio. Although I'm not using the method in this project, but it might be useful in your case. For example, in this old project of mine, you can see that I'm using them for bushes, trees, and even clouds in the scene. So check out the tutorial through the link in my video description. The trees in the scene are generated by using the sapling tree generator add-on. The add-on is pre-installed with Blender, but we have to enable it first through the Preference menu. Go to Edit, Preference, Add-on, and search for Sapling Tree Gen. Tick the checkbox to enable it. Then we can add trees into our scene easily through Add, Curve, Sapling Tree Gen. As for the trees material, I'm just using a simple toon shader. To create this simple toon shader, connect Diffuse BSDF to shader to RGB node. Then connect the shader to RGB node to a color RAM node. Adjust the gradient in the color RAM node for a custom shell shaded material. After the 3D scene is done, I began to draw one of the CF mascot into the scene. It was difficult for me to draw them following the official concept art, as the character designs for this year are insanely detailed and of high quality. So I ended up redesigning the character into a much simpler concept making one of the mascots into a schoolboy waiting for the bus. I use Medibank Pro for the inking and colouring process. 
because it offers a line stabilized option which creates a sharper looking and smoother curved line. Once the character drawing is done, I proceed to paint over the background using Photoshop. I start by painting the sky using a soft edge brush. Then, several custom brushes are used to paint the clouds and bushes. I have a tutorial on how to create your own custom leaf and cloud brush. You can find the tutorial link in my video description. Sometimes it gets a bit confusing on which part of the 3D model we should paint over. Generally, there are few areas that I usually focus on. First, painting beaver lines on the 3D objects. With this painted beaver line, we remove the sharp edges from our render. Next, painting over the sharp shadow edges using a color between the shaded and unshaded area. An easier way to do this is by painting on a new layer with a lower opacity. I also painted some extra glowing beaver lines around the scene. To do this, create a new layer and select layer blending options. Enable auto glow and adjust the glow settings. Remember to change the layer blend mode to linear dodge as well. Now everything that we paint in this layer will have the glowing effect. This method can also be used to paint bright grass strands. Other than that, I also painted some extra details into the scene, like these soft lights on the light pole, and tiny cracks found in some of the concrete areas. Lastly, I painted some extra glows into the scene using a soft edges brush. This will give the artwork a more atmospheric feel. Remember to paint the glow in a new layer with blend mode set to screen or linear dodge. The background painting process took me around one and a half hours. If you like to watch a non sped up painting videos, I have some of them in my channel playlist. I hope that you learned something useful in this video. Until then, see you next time.